Hey everybody, I am back with a game analysis for a game that I played in the Nimzo Indian Defense as White. And uh, I was following the chess schools course and uh, I had an interesting game that I thought I would share and show you what I learned. I did ultimately lose this game of course and these make them the best games to learn from. So uh, the chess schools repertoire with the Nimzo is to play knight f3. And then here my opponent shows b6 and then we go bishop g5. So this is the setup that we're using in the Nimzo in almost all lines, is this knight f3 followed by bishop g5. Here my opponent played h6, and uh, we grab the bishop, and they bring the queen out, and we play rook to c1. And this is about uh, preventing uh, these double pawns. Uh, now bishop to b7, which seems perfectly logical. e3, we're going to bring out our pieces and get castled. Uh, White castle, or sorry, black castles, we play e2. And then this is the first move that is not covered by the course. So uh, I'm on my own here. And uh, I play the most natural move, which is just castling. There's absolutely no problem with that. And black played bishop to f8, which struck me as a bit of a surprise. Uh, talking to my opponent after the game, uh, it seems that the idea is they want to play d6, e5, and then play on these dark squares, and then also play f5 and maybe g6 with a sort of king's Indian defense kind of uh, kind of setup, uh, which is interesting. And uh, kind of what I sort of walked into, I played d5, and my idea was that I wanted to shut this bishop out. And it uh, seems like d5 maybe wasn't quite ready, but the computer likes d5 quite a bit after some prep moves. So after either a3 or after bishop d3, when I was looking at this with the engine, there were a whole bunch of moves that I could have played and then play d5. So it likes d5 after just a slight amount of prep. Uh, my opponent responded with e5. Uh, if e takes, uh, of course I'm going to take back with the pawn, and I, this pawn is really quite annoying because it makes it difficult for this knight to come out. And I don't know, c6 just seems odd. And even if you play c6, I'm, I'm not ever going to take. Uh, so something like knight a6 and then queen to d4. Uh, we're connecting the rooks, preparing to bring the other rook over. And we're happy with this trade. Uh, after rook a c7, we're going to go a3. Our idea is that we can play b4, maybe even b5 at some point. Who knows? Uh, but we have nice play along the C file, which is the idea behind uh, another idea behind this D5 move. Uh, instead, my opponent closed things up with E5, which was kind of his plan anyway, so he was happy to do this. And I jumped in with Knight to E4, which is uh, a move that I thought was kind of nice. Um, it has a couple ideas. I was sort of going towards the king side, but I one of the things I took away from this game is if Black reacts the best way, which is Queen D8. Uh, going c5 uh, and trying to play on the open c file again. As uh, after we've played d5 and e5, we already kind of have this sort of King's Indian center already, even though it hasn't been solidified with, say, d6 and f4 and e4, we still have this, this structure. And then in those types of openings, white's often playing on the queen side. So this is an idea that I definitely wanted to keep in mind uh, going forward in the future in these sorts of structures is this idea of playing c5 and getting some play on on the queen side. Uh, I looked at, uh, so if, if f5 trying to kick the knight away so they can win the pawn, uh, this is not going to go well. We're just going to play knight g3, and if they have to play g6, uh, there's actually this nice move queen to b3 saying, I dare you to take the pawn, because this is quite a nasty check. Uh, lots of problems here. Um, so c5, quite a, quite a nice move. Even if we needed to prepare it uh, a bit, this is still probably the right, the right idea. Uh, instead, my opponent played queen to g6, which is actually a bit of a blunder, and I sort of found the right way to approach it, uh, but not quite. And this is one of the things I think is also interesting, that the uh, play is switches to the side of the board. I played bishop to d3. I wanted to hold, I didn't want this knight to move, and you wonder, well, what happens if f5, I move the knight, and then e4. It looks like I'm just stepping right into a fork. Uh, f5 was, of course, played, and uh, I blitzed out this knight to h4 idea, and, then, and I had an idea. Um, after any queen move, my intention was to play knight takes, which is not horrible, uh, but it overlooks a better way to play this. Instead, uh, knight to g3 is a really instructive kind of move. Uh, we're 
we're hitting this this f pawn, and if you try to defend it, well, g6, and and this is really quite cool and instructive, and especially helpful for me because I, I sometimes struggle with attacking ideas, and this is quite a nice one. Uh, we just play knight takes, and after queen takes, you grab with the bishop, say the queen moves, and then you can play e4. And we already have two pieces squarely on the king side. The knight can come into h5, uh, the queen can at some point come to g4, or maybe g5 itself. Uh, we have this rook lift going to come across, and then the last, how we get the last piece in, is we have f4 just completely blowing things open, and we will quickly be able to get every one of our pieces into this attack. His king is totally exposed. These pieces aren't doing anything. Even if he does manage to play d6, bring the bishop back, exchange, this would actually just help us because then it brings our knight one step closer uh, to, a better, to a better square that's really creating all kinds of problems. So I, I, this would have been an excellent idea to have seen. Uh, uh, just this knight, knight to g3 taking advantage of this f, f5 move. Uh, instead, I played knight takes f5, and after queen takes f5, um, I played knight to d6, which was my idea in the beginning. I intended this uh, move back when, the, uh, back when I played bishop to d3, and I just missed. I didn't recalculate along the way. I should have probably recalculated. Maybe if I had, I might have found this knight g3, uh, but I was completely surprised here uh, after queen takes d3, sacrificing the queen. Uh, instead of knight d6, I, I still had options. Again, I didn't take the chance to, to, to calculate. If I'd seen the queen sack, uh, something like f4, and it's not that easy uh, for, for black anymore, actually. Uh, the only move the computer liked was knight to a6, and we, we have this idea of dropping the bishop back, if the knight comes to b4, we move out of the way, and then after, say, queen f6, um, there's all kinds of issues. We can open things up, and there's going to be problems for black again on the king side, even though uh, I am already giving up quite a material. This is not quite as strong as what we are looking before, uh, but this is similar ideas. So, but after knight to d6, uh, this queen sack, and of course I need to take the queen. Uh, I looked at maybe not taking the queen, something like here, and then trying to get to here, and getting both rooks, but eh, there's just not time. Because uh, if he takes, so say I take this guy, he takes my queen, I have to take back here, and uh, I'm not I'm not getting anywhere. This, this knight's probably getting stuck. He can play knight to a6, defending this guy, and uh, uh, the knight is probably just trapped. Um, so instead, of course, we have uh, the instead of this, <clears throat> I did opt to take the queen, and he took back here. And I thought, okay, this is probably already worse. I, I, I the three pieces are almost always stronger than the than the than the queen. Uh, but I still had some ideas because. Uh, these pieces are pretty underdeveloped. Now, the computer actually thinks that white is still doing okay, and there's a sort of a nutso computer line where uh, white sacrifices even more material. I don't really believe any human would ever find it. Um, instead, I played e4, which I think is perfectly natural, and the point is is that I, I want to bring my pieces over as quickly as possible and try to create threats before there's an opportunity for black to bring their pieces in. And I actually managed to get a reasonable amount of play, uh, made some mistakes along the way. So, but a5, uh, black's idea is he wants to play knight a6, knight c5, and he doesn't want to allow b4. Uh, so queen to h3, and then knight to a6. Now note, I could, of course, grab this pawn and be like, woohoo, I get a pawn, but um, doing that's awful because it's going to allow this bishop back into the game. Uh, so there's no way I was going to take that pawn. Uh, instead, I played rook to c3 and rook to f8. Apparently, the best move is rook to e7, which is not that easy for me to see what difference that makes. But uh, here, I could play rook to g6. Uh, the knight comes in. We get rook to e1 defending and rook f8. And if apparently you can just give this pawn up and it's perfectly okay. You're in all kinds of trouble. Knight to d3 is pretty obnoxious. We get 
So something rookie two and bishop c5, and we see that we have all kinds of problems here. Uh, taking advantage of the fact that this knight d3 is possible because if we play rook takes, we lose the queen. Um, so instead, rook to f8, and this does give me some opportunities, uh, but I didn't see them. Uh, I played g4, but apparently just g3, which to me didn't quite make sense. Uh, why? What, what threats am I really making? I thought that he'll just... Um, just play rook f6 and bring the other rook over and I'm not ever going to threaten anything. But uh, after rook f6, I can play queen g4. The rook has to come back now. I can bring in and now I'm threatening to take on h6 and then say knight c5 trying to come in. Play rook e1 just freeing up my queen to move and let this guy be defended. Bishop to e7. Uh, <clears throat> And then rook e d3, bring in the other rook, and say bishop g5, I can actually sacrifice the bishop. And h takes, and rook to h3, and there are some actual problems here. Uh, check, the king comes in, uh, we can come give another check, a nice maneuver, and after a couple of checks, the computer decides that I can play this rook to g3 with ideas like h4 coming in, and you're not going to be able to capture, I'll take this guy, and maybe I can get a pawn here, on g6, and I still have some, some threats. Instead, bishop to e7 was played after my g4, and my idea with g4 is that I wanted to be able to push this pawn against the the rook coming to f6. So I played eight queen to h5, again trying to support this idea. Uh, d6, which I think is a mistake, uh, because now the bishop can't ever come to uh, c5 and pressure f2, which we saw in that earlier line. So I played h4, rook to f4, g5, and then rook to af8, and then I just made a huge mistake here. Uh, I, I captured... Uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, clearly, just this rook across. If I play rook to g3, I actually have some serious threats and some big problems here. Uh, I, he's forced to take, essentially, and then after I take here, say knight to c5, if I play rook h3, there's really nothing better than to give up the bishop for the for the pawn because I'm I'm gonna play I'm gonna play g6 and I'm gonna give mate there and there's and when I if I he allows g6 then the only move would be to play rook takes and he's gonna give the bishop up anyway but that way I would still have the pawn in that line. Uh, but with g takes uh, this allows rook capture on h4, and I really have nothing now. So this rook to g6, and queen g2, and bishop c8, and I played rook g3, but I, I have no play anymore. I have no threats, no attack. Uh, this f4 is a big problem, and uh, I'm quickly going to run out of moves. <laughs> and uh, it's going to... As soon as Black's pieces come in and start making threats, the, the game is going to be over probably pretty quickly. I mean, maybe not that quickly, but I'm going to just start losing pieces, and he's going to start making threats against my king, and the pieces are really going to come to life. Uh, but going back, there are a few interesting things. I liked this d5 plan that I came up with, and I thought it generated a lot of good ideas. So this idea of playing d5 after this bishop is no longer threatening to capture here, and then following this up with the knight e4, intending c5, uh, is in playing on the queen side is an idea that I want to make sure I take with me into future games. And then the other cool idea was uh, in the line where uh, queen to g6 was played, uh, this sacrifice here where I can able to bring in so many pieces so quickly is uh, definitely an idea worth trying to re remember in this type of position in this opening. Anyhow, I hope this helps, and I wish you guys the best of luck whenever you play the Nimzo. Thanks. Bye-bye.